OK, we're back, so that bubble needs to be out by the time we come back. Kjorn Marcus graphic in for the match title. Well, I mentioned earlier that Liga likes to think very close to about every answer she gives. I think halfway through that one, regarding her physical attributes, she probably wondered where she was going, but we know where she's going next. Back on court alongside Caroline Garcia to play against Sophia Kennan and Mira Andreva, who's got an immediate chance to bounce back from the disappointment of that opening defeat. That's the doubles major winner at the French Open. Here's Caro. Finalist the US Open as well. Excelled in both the doubles format of the game as well as singles. What a season she had last year. It's that kind of game that Garcia possesses when she is hot. She is white hot. She can go on great runs. Do you think even she can explain to herself sometimes why that happens? I mean, often there may be a physical reason or, or something behind the scenes, but it must be very frustrating because you're not serve. quite sure why your A game appears on occasions. And sometimes for quite long periods, like the second yeah. half of 2022, and then deserts you again. Mm. I mean, she does play higher risk tennis than a lot of the other players okay, on the women's scores. game. So it comes yeah. to the territory. Yeah, that's and a good point. And you'd rather have that kind of player, you'd co rather coach that kind of player than someone who's making third and fourth round quarterfinals every other week with very limited chances of winning a big one, Marcus. Absolutely. <laughs> you ask any coach that is worth their, their salt, and they'll tell you, give me somebody who's got a chance to win something big. That's what I'd like to work with. Someone who's got weapons. Oh, oh, wonderful angles and a wonderful winner at the end of it all. How many times did we see her drive this backhand down the line yesterday? Chooses a nice big target. Sophia Kennan is still only 25 years of age. What seems to have happened to her over the years? Autumn. The high. 
ways, winning the Australian Open, reaching the French Open final. It was back in 2020. I always forget about that, of course. Then the lows, loss of form, injuries, self-doubt. We spoke to her yesterday. Robbie was asking about that famous victory against Coco Koff. First round of Wimbledon, having come through qualifying for the championships the week before. Old. It's not that long ago that she was ranked at 200. Okay, challenge of goal on the right service line. The ball's gone from being as high as number four in March of 2020, but she's back up to 33. Now. Oh, the game okay. is otherworldly. One game all against the two challenges remaining. And who will ever forget the fifth game of the deciding set of the Australian Open final against Muguruza? Down love 40. It was the tipping point in the match. I think it was five winners she hit to eventually save the, the break points and go on to win the game. And then that was the platform that just catapulted her to victory. 15. It was the woman on the opposite side of the court, of course, Ika Spiontek, who then beat her in the French final. Also that year, 2020, she made the quarterfinals of the doubles at the French. Proper talent. I think she'll be back. She'll be knocking on the door. She's too good of a ball striker. Awesome. And of course, a couple of years ago, by a little older and wiser for the experiences that you've had in life. And it's one of the great matches that. Um, I'm sure is used all over the tennis in world where my son plays. You either win or you learn. I like that. Yep. Oh, Fifteen. First double fall to the contest off the racket of Caroline Garcia. Once again, Kenan with just wonderful vision. It's one thing having it, another thing being able to exploit it as well. Game. Good Box. angle on the smash. Box. It's Box. another Box. hold of serve this time for Caroline Garcia. So we're on serve early stages of this women's doubles encounter. The Eagles against the Hawks. We are! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Both 
zoning out there, I think, as JL prepared to give them a few words of wisdom. Not easy being a captain. Every couple of games, your players come and sit down. Not much might have happened. Got to try and pluck a nugget from somewhere. Yep. Time. Back for the break in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. speed from Shantek to get there, but very hard to control the ball once she did. Oh. So stand by everybody, we might have a rude interview coming soon. Oh. Yeah. 13, 15. Game Eagles. Well, plenty of Game intent three. in the return, but not the direction required, so it's another hold of serve for Mira Andreva. Hawk still well positioned in the tie overall, leading by eight points to four, thanks to Eager and Hubie in the mix dubs. Right, stand by for a rude interview, then we'll try and get it done. Okay, which, which, yeah, which one is it, A or B? Yeah, but he's already put the bloody headset on. So, on A, okay, so stand by A, stand by Casper Rude on A, three, two, one, and go, Marcus. Very pleased to say that uh, as we watch this latest service game, the birthday boy is joining us, Casper Rude, courtside. Happy birthday, Casper, are you having fun? Thank you, yeah. It's fun. <laughs> and you're a, you're a key part of the Hawks team. So far, so good today. What are you making of this doubles match? Well, uh, I don't want to talk too loud when they're serving, but um, yeah, so far, so good, like you say. I hope the women can step up and win this set as well. And then you're waiting in the wings to play alongside Hubie, who I presume is a very useful doubles partner to have. Have you, have you played together much before? No, yesterday was the first time, so it wasn't the best of uh, starts. We lost the set, but we want revenge today, so we're ready. What's his first Hubie, question? it's uh, Robbie alongside Hubie, Marcus here. Uh, like you, I am a big, big golf fan. <laughs> now, non-tennis question here. I want to know from you the best course that you have ever played. And it can't be a private course like Larry's course in oh. Indian Wells. <laughs> Hit me with it. Maybe a top two. Um, yeah, I think I've been fortunate to play um, a, a golf club called Seminole Golf Club in Florida. Yes. And uh, and I also got to play um, uh, Winged Foot in New York. So I think those two tops the list for me. Um, 
both very historic places. Um, Wingfoot has ho hosted the US Open plenty of times and will host it again in a couple of years. So, yeah, great courses, great places. I mean, just a dream as a golf fan to get to play there. Well, it's annoying. You're so good at golf. You're brilliant at tennis. We, we look forward to seeing you in action shortly, Casper. And don't celebrate too hard come, uh, come your birthday dinner. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, Casper on shortly. Wingfoot. I'll never forget the US Open there in 2006. And, and of course, if you want an in and in Wingfoot, I can tell you that Jim Curry is a member there. Is he? Yes. I'm testing your golfing knowledge now then. Okay. 2006, US <laughs> Open. Can you remember A, who won it, and B, who should have won it? Colin Montgomery. Should have won it. Yeah. All he had to do, I say all he had to do on the 18th of the US Open Box. was um, find the green with his approach. We'll come Box back and talk more about two. that totally non-connected subject in just a moment. But here we're still on serve, 2-3. Two, three. Three, two, Give Robbie a few seconds to try and work out who Monty was up against in 2006. I saw just the other day, can you believe it? I saw just the other day. What, the highlights? Yeah. Well, no, they were making particular reference to the 18th. Yeah. They hit me with it. Put, well, me, I'll, put I'll, me out of my misery. I'll, okay, I'll, give me some time. I'll wait until the change of ends. Okay. Look at that fierce determination and the focus. Was it Podrick Harrington? No. I mean, I, I hate to be rude, but it, it's, it's a guy that most people will forget ever won a major. American. Back from the break. Um. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 2006, Robbie, all through the, um, the change events, has been trying to work out who pipped Colin Montgomery. <laughs> Phil Mickelson was right in the mix too until he launched a ball into the hospitality tent, which led to a long delay, which I think might have affected Montgomery's concentration as well. And somebody else snuck through to win it. Do you want a clue? Yes. Australian. Is proper tennis. I can't think. I'll give you another. This is a random card. I don't think this will help. Did you, as a youngster, now everyone saw The Saint starring Roger Moore. Yeah. Many years later, they had The Return of the Saint. Yes. Can you remember the name of the actor? No uh, chance. That's not going to help you no. in that case. You're way better in that department than me. His initials, I'm starting to panic now that I might have got this wrong, but I don't think I have. The T15. Initials are G O. Greg Ogilvy. Well, you got the Ogilvy. Jeff Ogilvy. Jeff Ogilvy. He snuck in from nowhere. And I'm now going to double check that, otherwise. I've ruined the whole of the last 10 minutes of broadcasting. Oh, what an angle. I mean, Sviantek's done so well to keep the point alive. All T15. Well, he definitely won a major that much I, I remember. Oh, thank goodness I'm right. He just won a fair few majors. 
Taxi touching. Jim Furyk got into the mix there, although I think he'd finished a lot earlier and then the field came back towards him. Ogilvy won with a plus five score. That's pretty impressive. Here's the the Cannon and a backhand exchange. So pleasing on the eye. So Ogilvy plus five, Furick and Mickelson and Montgomery all finished at plus six. Podrick Harrington, to be fair, plus seven in fifth place. Mm -hmm. Kenneth Ferry, I mean, he didn't have a lot of great uh, slams. Kenneth Ferry of Great Britain was up there as well. Okay, Eagles. Back to the business in hand, three games all here. This time it's the cannon backhand that comes out on top. So we'll do the skydive postcard during the next sit down, please. Skydive postcard. Some of this. Carrows doubles prowess. So quick up the court, anticipated what was coming. You can see her well on the move, bisecting her opponents. Just <coughs> continually moving forward. for a very long time, Robbie. She's, she's still only 30. Remember that quote way back from Andy Murray? That's right. I think she was still a teenager at the time. And Murray said she's a future world number one. And a lot of people scoffed at him, but goodness me. She's been up there. She got to number four. Currently ranked at 20. But in trouble here. In big trouble here. The backhand into the net. The break goes the way of Kenin and Andriva. so close to the Etihad Arena, including Climb Yaz Island. It's the world's biggest indoor skydiving flight chamber. The world's tallest indoor climbing wall can be found there as well. 
You can be a first-time flyer. Probably helps to be a bit more experienced. You might send Robbie off there with a microphone. 20. He's been reminding us constantly he's got no head for heights. I think it would make, Just make sure we excellent make vocal sure we broadcasting. Back to the break in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And Driva and Kennen heading in the right direction with the break at 4 3. No way to take it that time. final of the French Open had escaped your mind temporarily. I, I'd forgotten, and it's poor because I was there, that Igor Sviante reached the French Open doubles final in 2021 with Bethany Matic Sands. I, I, I don't know why I hadn't remembered that. Lost to Barbora Krajikova and Katarina Sands. doubles parents of I think they've split up, haven't they? Just split? Yeah. Do we have an official reason as to why? Yeah, the rumour is they want to split up and each take a weak one to see if they can win with somebody else. from Bob Orr winning the singles and doubles at the French Open in the same year. Kafalnikov did on the men's side, didn't he, at Roland Garros? You asked me a tough question a little earlier. Can you tell me who his doubles partner was that year when he won it? You want a short answer to that? Oops. I'm going to tell you that he's a Czech player and that he's currently coach on tour right now. The Hawks team and challenge to call him right near sideline what was called the pass. And his initials are D V. Mm. That is well won. Eagles. It's at moments like this that you want your producer. Eagles lead five to games to three. Float a little name in your ear. Nudge nudge. Hawks have two challenges remaining. Or they can let you flounder. Yeah, which is precisely what they're doing. <laughs> DV. Daniel. Oh. Oh, hang on. Daniel. Please. Daniel. Vecek. Oh, Daniel. I, w I was going to struggle with that, Robbie. Okay. That, that's not as bad as forgetting Jeff Ogilvy. <laughs> but one all. Okay. Some sort of competitive spirit builds up and you start testing each other with tough questions. You know who else came close to winning both um, the singles and the doubles at the French very recently? 
Coco Goff yeah. got to the final of both yes. lost both. Coach JL is happy with the movement. That's exactly what he wanted. Just the execution letting Sophia down there. Do you remember the French woman who won both singles and doubles at Roland Garros? Not, uh, not too well. A few years ago now. Good friend of mine. So I should remember. What a great individual. What a ball striker she was back in the day. My goodness. The one and only Mary Pierce. And I've always liked her because we have the favourite, same favourite actor. And who's that? Nick Nolte. Really? Yeah. I mean, she, she named him many years ago. I don't know if he's still her favourite actor yeah. because he's, well, he's still going, but yeah. looks a bit different from his, his golden period. Mm -hmm. Sophia Cannon's father. Let's for so. Time days. Eagles lead. First of the contest. Four. And it keeps Chiosa and Garcia within touching distance. However, after the break, Kenin and Andreva will serve for the match. First point, odds of winning the game go up considerably. Beautiful. In control of that point. Just 
to make her play the extra shot, but she was always the likely yeah, winner yeah. there. I mean, you gave us those amazing stats, Robbie, in terms of if, if you win the first point on serving the singles. Is, is it a similar story in, in terms of the doubles? Yeah, I haven't you seen those numbers. I, I would think it's... Greater chance of holding serve. That would be my gut feel. Proving the case here. Yes, if the net's on your side, the job's that much easier, and it brings up a succession of match points. She just, she's, just, she's the one chatting, almost leading things at times. Really impressive. You can't expect Caroline Garcia and Iga Sviantek to go away without a fight. It's a, a couple of match points saved. Still two more to dice with. Eagles-Hawks encounter promises to be as close as all the others. Well, well, well. Yes, coach is happy and understandably so. This woman producing some wonderful dubs out there. Andreva with a great interview. interception to seal the deal, yes! Well, that's a really sweet nine, moment for Mira Andreva, who only came seven, into this event at relatively six, short notice, five, but she's making four, an impression alongside three, Sophia. Two, Let's hear from them. One. Well, Sophia and Mira.